Firmly plant and level the M3 tripod and attach traverse and eleva elevation mechanism to traversing bar. Raise the pintle lock on the tripod. Insert the pintle into the socket on the tripod. Flip down the pintle lock on the tripod. Disengage the stow pin. Attach the T&E mechanism to the gun mount. The traversing hand wheel must be on the left side. Lower the gun into the mount. Slide the gun's front grooves onto the mount lugs. Align the rear holes. Insert the pin from the right to the left. Squeeze the spring-loaded pins on the feed throat with the feed throat facing down. Insert into the slots on both sides of the feeder. Check the functioning with safety on safe, then on fire. Ensure that the bolt is forward. Index the feed assembly to the left and close the cover. With the top cover closed, put the safety in the safe position. Push left. Pull the bolt to the rear. Push the charger handles back to the forward position. Rotate the charger handles up. Press the trigger. The bolt should not go forward. Put the safety on the fire position. Push right. Press the trigger. The bolt should spring forward. Put the safety in the safe position. Leave the bolt in the forward position and continue. Inspect the interior of the receiver for missing or damaged parts. With the top cover open, touch the firing pin. Touch the bolt face to ensure it is lubricated and not dry, pitted, or corroded. Check the feed slide assembly and the feeder. Move the secondary drive lever back and forth. The feed slide assembly should move freely. Press the pause to check the spring action. Inspect the link guide for roughness and galling. Close the top cover. When loading and charging, the bolt moves to the rear causing the drive levers and feed slide assembly to move the linked rounds over one place in the feeder. The bolt slams forward, delinking and grasping the first round in its extractors. The bolt moves rearward the second time, moving down the curved rail on the vertical cam assembly and forcing the round down the bolt face, out of the extractors, and into the bolt fingers. As the bolt moves rearward, the gun's linkage simultaneously moves the next linked round into position to align with the bolt extractors and the cocking lever cocks the firing pin. When firing, pressing the trigger causes the receiver sear to release the bolt. The recoil springs force the bolt forward. As the bolt travels forward, the cocking lever is released. The bolt sear strikes the receiver plate and the bolt sear is held rearward. This action releases the firing pin, which strikes the primer, and the round is fired. In recoil and ejecting, the pressure from the burning powder forces the bolt rearward. As the bolt moves rearward, it causes the next round to be cammed down the bolt face by the vertical cam assembly. The round forces the spent case out of the bottom of the gun. Firing will continue automatically as long as the trigger is depressed. To load the first round, ensure the chamber is empty with the bolt forward and the charging handles in the up position.
Place the weapon on safe. Open the cover. With the female link first, insert the first round through the feed throat into the feeder and cross the first pawl. Don't roll the round. The round should rest against the side of the bolt. Move the feed slide assembly to the left and close the cover. Do not force the cover, it should close easily. To pull the bolt to the rear, grasp the charging handles with palms down. Press the charging handle locks and rotate the handles down. Pull chargers sharply to the rear until the bolt locks. Push the chargers forward. Rotate handles up to the lock position. Place the safety in the fire position and press the trigger. Lower the charging handles and pull sharply to the rear until the bolt locks. Push the charging handles back to the forward position and rotate the charging handles up. Place the weapon on safe. When removing lie or a spent round, put the weapon on safe. Remove the case catch bag and charge the weapon. Pull the charging handles to the rear, ensuring that the bolt is locked to the rear. Return the charger handles to the forward position and rotate only one charger handle up. Insert the tip of a cleaning rod through the receiver rail as close to the bolt face as possible. Raise up on the cleaning rod to force the live round or spent case off the bolt face and out the bottom of the gun. Catch the live round as it falls out. Turn in the live rounds as required by current directives. In removing link rounds from the feeder, open the cover and with one hand reach beneath the feeder. Press the primary and secondary positioning paws simultaneously. At the same time, slide the link rounds out of the feeder and out of the feed throat. Return the link rounds to the ammunition can. To remove the feed throat assembly, squeeze plungers to ensure proper functioning. If not functioning properly, return to direct support maintenance. To remove the bolt and backplate assembly, put the safety on fire, open the top cover, and pull straight out on the backplate pin. Use rim of a spent case or cleaning rod to start the pin. Lift up slightly on the backplate assembly. Slowly pull the bolt and backplate assembly out of the receiver. Support the bolt with one hand and the control grip with the other. Lift the bolt up slightly and pull back to remove it. To remove the primary drive lever and vertical cam assembly, Reach under the top of the receiver to locate the drive lever lock on the vertical cam assembly. Slide the lock rearward about one quarter of an inch. Press down on the primary drive lever's pivot post. This releases the primary drive lever and vertical cam. Pull out the cam and the primary lever from the receiver. To remove the secondary drive lever, push down on the pivot post from outside the top cover. This releases the secondary drive lever. Lift out the secondary drive lever from inside the top cover. To remove the feed slide assembly, pivot the tray with feed slide assembly from out of the top cover. Move the feed slide assembly to line up tabs with slots in the tray. Lift upward on the feed slide assembly. To remove the top cover assembly and the feed tray, hold the top cover straight up to align the cross pin end. Rotate and pull the pins straight out. Lift off the top cover. To remove the feed tray, lift the tray out of the feeder. To remove the alignment guide assembly, depress the flat leaf spring by using a cartridge link toggle, male end, or small tool. Slide the alignment guide toward the feeder mouth. 
pull rearward on the alignment guide and lift it out. Pull out the ogive plunger. To remove the round positioning block, push in and slide the round positioning block toward the muzzle end of the gun. Pull the round positioning block away from the wall of the receiver. To remove the charger assemblies, both sides, first rotate the charger handle up. Use either your fingers or a spent case to pry out on the lip of the lock plunger. Lift up on the lock plunger to retract it and slide the charger assembly all the way rearward. Pull the charger assembly away from the receiver. To remove the receiver sear assembly, turn the receiver over on its top. Put the safety in the fire position. Lift up slightly on the lock pin with your fingers or female end of the cartridge link. Squeeze the receiver sear underneath the safety and simultaneously rotate the sear housing assembly approximately 45 degrees in either direction. Press down on the sear housing assembly and continue rotation until it stops. Press the receiver sear and safety together while you put the safety on safe. Lift out the sear housing assembly. To attach the receiver sear assembly, turn the receiver over on its top. Place the sear housing on the receiver and line up the sear housing assembly at a right angle to the barrel center line. Put the safety on fire. Press down and rotate the housing assembly until it stops. Squeeze the sear toward the safety and continue to rotate the sear until it snaps into place. Line up the lugs on the charger with the slots in the receiver rail. Insert the charger lugs into the slots. Hold the charger tightly against the rail. Slide the charger forward until it locks in place. To attach the round positioning block, insert the block into the slots with the tang end forward. Push against the block and slide it toward the rear until the block locks it in place. Insert the ogive plunger. Insert the alignment guide assembly. Position the alignment guide assembly so that the pin is lined up with the slot in the feeder wall. Hold the alignment guide against the front wall and slide the alignment guide into the receiver until it clicks. Attach the feed tray and feed slide assembly by placing the tray into the top of the feeder, recess side up. The pinholes on the tray should line up with the lugs on the receiver. Position the feed slide assembly so that the tabs are lined up with the slots on the tray. Insert the tabs into the slots. Drop the feed slide assembly into the tray and move it slightly to ensure engagement. To attach the top cover assembly, ensure the feed tray is in place resting in the receiver. Place the top cover on the receiver with the pinholes in line with the receiver lug and feed tray pinholes. Hold the top cover straight up. Insert top cover pins on both sides. Ensure the cross pin is fully inserted, then rotate the top cover fully open. Engage the secondary drive lever. Rotate the feed slide assembly and tray upward. Engage the forked end of the secondary drive lever with the feed slide pin. To engage the vertical cam assembly, Slide the vertical cam assembly through the rear of the receiver. Engage the forked end in the notch. Engage the primary drive lever. Hold the vertical cam assembly in place and slide the primary drive lever into the receiver. Slide the drive lever lock rearward and engage the pivot post of the lever through the holes in the receiver and the vertical cam. Slide the drive lever lock on the vertical cam just beneath the top of the receiver forward. Insert the bolt and backplate assembly. With sear assembly on the gun, place safety in the fire position. Make sure the cocking lever is cocked and forward. Press the receiver sear using thumbs or rim of a cartridge case. With the receiver sear pressed down, slide the bolt and backplate assembly all the way forward. Insert the backplate pin to lock the assembly in place. 
To install the feed throat assembly, squeeze the plungers, align the pins with the holes in the receiver, and release the plunger to reattach the feed throat. Ensure that the rear sight on the weapon is completely down. Push in the locking knob on the bracket and raise the bracket arm to its uppermost position. Hand tighten the bracket's locking knob. Slide the Mark 19 bracket onto the weapon mount until the locking pin on the bracket engages in the hole of the mount. Ensure that the locking pin is securely engaged. Loosen the knob on the TWS mount. Any slot on the rail may be used to mount the TWS as long as the mount does not hang over the edge of the rail. Place the bar of the mount into a slot on the rail and hand tighten the mounting knob until the knob makes two clicks.